Oh my goodness, that was so much work. Please tell me we never have to do that by hand again. You don't. You don't ever, ever, ever have to do it by hand again. At least not for my class. I have heard that some science teachers make you do it by hand, but not me. So let me show you how to do this with StatCrunch really quickly. Actually, you can click in an options, I mean, because I have that, but I'll just go back to the beginning. So data, oh, oh excuse me, stats, I apologize. Sat, summary stat, columns. I'll click columns. I just want the statistics exam, so I'm just going to grab that. All right, so for fun, I'm going to have the mean, and then look, variance, standard deviation, right there. And if I scroll down, oh, there's two more. I'm going to hit. I'm going to hold down my control button and hit those two as well so you can see the difference. So unadjusted variance, unadjusted standard deviation. And so, um, and if you're interested, I can click range. There it is, if you want to see it. All right, so I'm going to click compute. The order that you click them in is the order they show up in the table, believe it or not. So look right there. Variant or mean is 74, variance 195.111. Ah, so variance and standard deviation are the regular ones. And these two, the unadjusted, are the population values. So these ones are the sigma ones over here, and then these ones over here are the S ones. Good to know. Now on the calculator, if you go to stat, calculate, I already have the data set in there, so stat edit to put the data in there if you need to. And then you go down here to calculate, you can see there's S right there, which is 13.968. There's Sigma, which is 13.251. They're there, the standard deviations are there. The, po the variances are not. The calculator does not give variance. StatCrunch does, but the calculators do not. Hmm. Oh, right, so we need to write some things down for ourselves. Okay, no, 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 no. We will never do this again by hand, <laughs> right? So on the calculator, you do stat calc and then one variable stat. It will find s and will find sigma. Right? It'll say S, X, and Sigma, X, but that, that's not really important, right? What's important is that it's S and Sigma. It will not find variance. You have to find variance yourself. We'll talk about that down here. Now, you still don't have to do all this by hand work. There's something going on. Give me a minute. But in StatCrunch, it's really easy. In StatCrunch... We went to data. I mean, obviously we have the data set in there, but data, then we chose, oh no, not data. I keep doing that. We went to stats. Here we go. Stat, that's what it is. Stat, summary stat, columns. So that's where we went. Not data. So stat, summary stat, and then chose columns because you're having it run summary statistics on a column of data. And then there was one little piece in there, the unadjusted ones. So let's make a note to ourselves. In StatCrunch, these two are regular, right? So when you find them, these are the regular values in StatCrunch. They're actually adjusted. That's why you're dividing by n minus 1. Oops, sorry, they're adjusted. That n minus 1 is an adjustment for the fact that it's a sample, not a population. So the n minus 1, oh, except it's, it's like a blob, <laughs> the n minus 1 is an adjustment. You're adjusting. These two are called unadjusted. In StatCrunch and actually other computer programs as well. Okay. All right. Now, one last thing here. How do we find variance and standard deviation from each other? Right. So I know about the unadjusted, adjusted thing. Fine. There's a relationship going on. 
So if you notice, it says that sigma squared is equal to variance, right, or s squared. So on the calculator, if they give you standard deviation, which is what the calculator does, then you square it to find the variance, right? So if they tell you that s is equal to, you know, I don't know, 4, then you would say variance is s squared, which is 16, right? Or they could tell you, you know, sigma is 5, then you square it, sigma squared is 25, like that. That's how you work it on a calculator. So it'll give you sigma and s, and that's what I mean when I say you find it yourself, right? So this right here is how you find, right, how to find variance with a calculator. Now, there are times on computers, um, not necessarily StatCrunch, although sometimes I will do this to you, but on computer, or your instructor might do this to you, um, I will give you variance, and you'll have to find the standard deviation. Mean, right? So if you have the variance, how do you find the standard deviation? Well, if you have the variance, let's say, you know, I tell you that S squared is 49, well, that means that s is the square root of 49, which is 7, right? And then if I tell you that, you know, s, or sigma squared, sorry, sigma squared, that's a sigma, sigma squared is 81, then sigma is the square root of 81, which is 9. All right, so what's the relationship? Remember that variance is the standard deviation squared, right? Either style, s or s squared. Or in other words, standard deviation is the square root of variance, right? This side of the house we're using over here, right? So we're taking the standard deviation, we're squaring it to find the variance. This side is what we're using over here, right? We have the variance and we want to find the standard deviation. This is what we do. So this is the one that you use standard deviation to find variance. That's this one. And this is the one where you use variance to find standard deviation. Okay, because there's an inverse relationship kind of going on here. And so you're using that relationship forwards and backwards. Make sure you write those down and highlight them. They're a big deal. All right. All right. All right. All right. We've, we found all these numbers, but what do they mean? Right? So what do these data numbers have to do with our data? Like what I've lost the forest for the trees. So we have these stats exam scores. We found the distance from the mean. We couldn't add them up. Well, we could, but it didn't get us anywhere. So we squared them all. And then we divided by how many there were, but because we squared them, it got us something useless. So then we took the square, well, it's not useless, but it's not what we want. So then we took the square root, but then we realized that that's not really good. That's for a population. So we want to adjust it by dividing by N minus one to make these new ones. Okay. But what are those numbers meaning? How do we interpret the standard deviation? What does it mean? Uh, okay, so the algebra class had a standard deviation of 10.176 and a variance of 103.56. So if you look at the algebra class right here, this is an S, and those are points, and this is actually points squared, if you want to know, right here, and that's S squared. So for the algebra class, that's what we had. The statistics class, we just did this. The S was... 13.96, right? 13.968, right? And the variance was 195.1. Now I'm using the S values because of course this was a sample, not a population. So I'll just make a little note. Okay, 
So now, how do these classes compare? Your mean was right here at 74 for both of them, right there. Right, there's your mean. So who's got the larger spread, right? Well, the stats class does, which we kind of knew when we've talked about the riskier student, the gambler student, right? The statistics class is more spread out than the algebra class because they're farther away on average from the mean. Okay, so let's say the statistics class is more spread out, more disperse, more varied, right, than the algebra class. All right, how can you tell? All right, well, when you look at the S for the algebra class, it was 10.176. That is smaller than the S for the statistics class, which was 13.968. That's a bigger number. It's more spread out, right? The statistics classes. Or let's think of it this way, the S squared for the algebra class, because you can do it with the variances. This is one of the ways variance is useful because you can compare variances. That 103.56 is less than 195. Oh, that was stats, not algebra, sorry. Than 195.11. Right? Now this is points squared, this is points whatever, right? It's still smaller, right? And that's the important point, right? It was smaller, smaller standard deviation, smaller variance, right? So it has, since it has a smaller variance, smaller standard deviation, or if you like, the stats class has larger S and S squared. The larger your standard deviation is, S, the larger your variance is, S squared, then you're a larger, more varied, more spread out data set. That's what that number means. All right, so we just saw this. The larger the standard deviation, the more spread out it is. So important to understand. So if it's larger standard deviation, it's more spread out. It's more dispersed. All right. Then if the... The variance, the variance does not have a practical interpretation. Now, that's not to say the variance is useless. We actually use the variance a lot in upper level math. Um, it's, a, it's a measure that we use in later chapters and for some mathematical formulas, but we don't interpret it in the same way we interpret standard deviation. Standard deviation is what we're going to use earlier in the course. Standard deviation can be thought of as roughly the give or take from the mean. So it's... You know, in other words, most data fall within about one standard deviation or two of the mean, right? It's rare for um, things to be falling outside of a couple standard deviations from the mean. So the script that you use for interpreting, so it'll say, you know, interpret the mean and the standard deviation. There's a little script we, we follow. We say that we expect, and then you write out what your data variable is and with your context to be the mean, right? Because you expect the mean value, give or take the standard deviation. Now it could be sigma, it could be S. It depends on what kind of problem you're working with. And of course, you always want to include units for your problem. And just on a side note, when I said just there, I said it's unusual for it to fall past two. That's the rule of thumb for um, being an outlier, right? Unusual values. It's not, it's not strictly an outlier, but we'll say unusual values are values that are beyond two standard deviations away. See that right there? So most data fall within two standard deviations. And that would be a less than 5% chance. So, so data, set, data points that have a less than 5% chance are considered unusual, right? Oh, this is a typo. Remember that our mean was 74. Sorry, that was a typo. I apologize. <laughs> All right, so typo. I'll fix that for future semesters. Apologize. All right, so interpret the mean and the standard deviation in the context of the situation. Okay, so follow this script. Super important. We've got the script. We're going to need it. Put it on your note sheet, right? 
Okay, so we say, we expect, and then we write out what we're talking about. So we expect the average statistics student. Actually, I'll just say a statistics student. We, we expect an av or a random, that's what I was looking for, a random statistics student. to score 74 points on this exam give or take um, well rounding it 14 right give or take 14 points another way to say that is most students most stat students scored between, okay, so 74, give or take 14. So that'd be 60 to 88 points, right? So when you say 74, give or take, what you're saying right there, here, I'll write it over here. 74 plus or minus 14. 74 add 14 is 88. 74 minus 14 is 60. Now, did we have um, any unusual scores? And I'm not going to use the algebra class because we're so used to using it, the stats class data, so I'm going to change that. So did the stats course have any unusual values? Well, we just said 60 to 88. So, but that's not unusual. Being, being past 88 is not unusual. What you want to do for unusual is you want to add on two of them. So 60, oh, excuse me, 74, 74 plus two fourteens, right? It's, it's the same thing as here. You can write 74 plus 14 plus 14. That's what you're doing, right? So that's 74 plus 28 plus two fourteens. Is 102 and then you do 74 minus 2 14s or if you will minus 14 minus 14 is 46 so 74 minus 14 minus 14 is 74 minus 2 times 14 which is 102 and 46 so if we look back at our data set no we had our lowest number was 60 our highest number was 100 so no we had no unusual values. The stats course had no unusual values because nobody was above 102 or below 46. There we go.